Welcome, ladies, to the Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co-hosts, Liz and Andressa. Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz. And this is Andressa. Welcome back to the Real Estate Investor Show, mini edition. What are we talking about today, Andressa? I'm going to speak super quick so you guys cannot understand a thing that I'm saying because <laughs> people are like, did I put, did I press 1.5 speed? We're talking about very specific subjects. On this episode, we're going to be, I'm going to be sharing with you golden freaking nuggets I learned from a rock star PM during our bus tour. All right, Liz. So recently, we did a special event called Strike Hire for our Strike members. And we had a bus tour that we, we took the ladies to walk through property and apartment complex of ours in North Carolina. And during that the bus tour, we learned a ton from our Rockstar PM. And I started taking really like mental notes of the golden nuggets that she was dropping it. And then the next day when we were talking to the ladies during our workshop, one thing that I was like, it's a commonality among their perception was like, we did not know property managers like that existed. So I was like, well, here's the thing. I don't think we need to keep those golden nuggets with us. So the purpose of this mini suit is that I'm going to share with you guys five golden nuggets that I've learned from a rock star property manager. And I know you love Tara, right, Liz? I did. She's just gets right. She's like, she's like us, real, authentic, gets to it. No BS, our, our kind of lady and who knows her stuff. <laughs> she does. And, and I told her, Tara, I want to interview you on our podcast. Yes. And then she's like, oh, no. <laughs> like, so, Tara, if you're listening, we're coming for you. <laughs> All right. So here's the number one. So five things. Number one, many, many investors only engage with a property management company after the fact, meaning after they purchase the property. And what she was sharing, she was sharing more specifically about syndication, but I would expand for those of you that are investing in small multis and even single families. So in the case of syndication, Tara and her team walk through with our team members, with DeRosa, with Matt, during the due the, the diligence period, and I think that that is so important because they can see from a property management perspective, what are the th- what are the gaps? What are the what's what's the current pulse over here? Instead of just coming along after the fact, I think that bringing a property manager during that period, it's it's it should be a must in my opinion. What do you think, Liz? No, it, it, absolutely, and that really is true partnership. Right. So you can't just do that with someone you just met and say, you're going to walk these 14 buildings with me. So, you know, really cultivating that relationship, you know, putting money in the bank with these property managers. So it's a win win and you're not taking advantage of their time is really, really important. But I completely agree to be in true partnership with a company and to be growing with a company. It makes so much sense, but you got to be mindful of wasting people's time. No one wants their time wasted. Absolutely. And we asked Tara, so listen. If you were the owner and you were vetting a property management company, what are the questions that you ask them? What would you do? And then she said one very important thing is like, there's no property manager companies that specialize in everything. There's no such a thing. So that will be a red flag for me. They want, we want as owners to have a pulse on the game. And then we need to know from the property management company if they specialize on the asset that we are currently working with or the asset that we're going to be uh, working with in the future and really paint the clear picture of what the market looks like, what demand is, what is the rent, 
happening in the area? What is the history? What's going up, going down, it's flat. What is it? So that was something super important. She talked to, I, the number three thing is about add value. Value add, Andres, it's like my Portuguese kicking in. Value add, but I heard from her mouth very different. When we talk about value uh, add, we're not, she was not talking just about the physical portion of it, improving the units and the building itself. She also talked about the importance on investing in team members, qualified professionals that will bring the value, overall value up. Many times the people that are in place are not qualified to stay in place and you need to really invest time on that. So I thought that that was really, really cool. Number four here is speaking the same language as the, the owner. And I know about language. <laughs> I know about languages and when you're not speaking the same language, because many times there is like a battle, right, in terms of improvements and timelines, in terms of when it comes down to implementing the business plan. So as Liz is saying, it's a team effort. It's not that we're like pulling, pushing and pulling here. We're both the property manager and the owners are on the same boat, but they need to be rolling <laughs> to the right direction. And I think it's it creates a lot of conflicts, right, Liz, and miscommunication mm -hmm. when they're not speaking the same language or have different time frames in front of them. Absolutely. And I would say the biggest reason for that is they're not aligned on the business plan. They're not aligned on like the most important goals that need to get achieved. And in, and in large multi or small multi or any type of property that you have a property management company in place, that's the most important time you should be spending is alignment on what is the plan for that property, quarterly, yearly, what have you. And I think that doesn't happen and the wrong things get focused on and then disconnects happen and then it goes astray. So just getting aligned with how with that business plan is, is critical. Obviously, that's key to large multi because that's just how you run those buildings. But I wish I knew that when I was running a duplex because that would have been so helpful to communicate to that property manager of what... What's the plan? What's the vision? Now it's how are we going to make that happen together in, in partnership? And I think for those of you that are listening right now and have small royalties or single families, right? If you, you are getting super frustrated with your property management company, is there is a lack of alignment between owners and property management. This is a time to schedule an alignment call mm. to restructure. What's an alignment what, call? It's getting in alignment, basically. If the balls are being dropped and, and you're getting super frustrated, the same things are happening over and over again, it means that there's no boundaries. There's no key performance indicators there. You guys are just like shooting from the hip and just putting up with the fires. That is an opportunity for you as an investor, as an owner, to call it. For alignment call so you can really share your vision your boundaries and ask them the same the same thing and both both together can create can collaborating and, and create a plan that works uh to execute the business plan and i think that that's the ultimate goal how can you as an owner and the property management company together come with a plan that fulfills the business plan that's the ultimate goal and then the last thing that she was, Tara was like adamant about it. She was not calling the tenants tenants. She was calling them residents. She refers them to residents. And she was very clear when she said, we don't provide, provide housing. We provide homes. And you can, it shifts the energy when you have residents. There's like a sense of ownership, even though they're, they're renting it. They have a sense of ownership and they have a sense of community with all the different types of activities they do. You can see in the building around, there's no trash, there's no lack of maintenance because people take care of their homes. If they feel that they are there renting and they have no quote unquote ownership of, of that place, then it just doesn't work. So I really love it. And when people refer to them like tenants, you're like, no, they're not tenants, they're residents. It's just really like creating the culture for the company and then for and they feel it 
they feel it. And, and that's something that I would encourage you to start calling your tenants residents instead, even if it's a single family, that's the theme for it here, right? What can you apply what you have learned, what I've learned with the syndication across the board? And I thought that was really crucial list. It's huge, right? And it, it, it changes the way you think and treat a person and what you call them and how you, how you, how you even approach their problem. Approaching a tenant's problem is different than a resident's problem, right? Just the energy is different, which is huge because customer service is everything and uh, taking good care of your, your, your customers is everything in this business. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We will be getting Tara on this podcast. That's my promise to you guys. Until then, enjoy. Ciao. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There, you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community, and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.